This segment with Jalen Johnson, sponsored by Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868. He's on Twitch and our YouTube stream via the Circa Resort and Casino hotline, Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, home of the world's largest sports book. I mean, we, we talked to Jalen last week. It goes great. I watch Monday Night Football, and then I wake up and all hell's broken loose, and the man has requested a trade from the Bears. Couldn't have given us that scoop, Jalen? Couldn't have done that on the show? What happened? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I couldn't have, couldn't have done that at, that at that time. I understand. I understand. Uh, but wh- I think I know. I think. But but what happened? What what? Why the request of the trade from, from your end? So what you what you think? Have you said you think you know? Let me hear that. Well, I mean, I I, I think that I, I think that you wanted to be paid. They were not meeting you where you were, and you saw the trade deadline as an opportunity to maybe spur some action and find someone else who would pay you. So you requested the trade. That's my read of it. Understood. But now, nah, I mean, honestly, just for me, I would say it's just um, I was I would say it's some frustration. I'm not going to get into where, in a sense, the frustration was coming from or anything like that as far as the details. But I would just say just some frustration, and then honestly, just wanting to see some different opportunities, see what else in a sense was out there. If I was clearly, if I was able to, but I mean, I mean, you heard from the from the horse's mouth itself on how the trade situation went. So I mean, just. I mean, going back to – not even going back to the drawing board, just continue to be who I am and what I am to this team and just continue to lead, continue to play this game at a high level. And, I mean, that's that's all I'm in control of right now. That's all I'm worried about right now. I'm not really too focused on any of the future things. The only future thing I'm concerned about is, is all, being all pro. So just trying to continue to play this game at a high level and continue to up my value. And whenever that time comes for a contract situation, I know that – it'll have to be with with some of the best the way I'm going to finish the season out. You know, the way Ryan Poles was talking about it, we were left a little confused because it was like he said that you guys never got to like a last and final offer. But he also said that it's a good relationship and that you can personally talk to him if you have yeah. felt disrespected. Is it Does it feel like a good relationship personally between you and Ryan Poles right now? Yeah, I mean, I feel like personally, we we've always been always been. I feel like even when problems came up previously in the past, I mean, I I was always one to pick up the phone and call him before I feel like I sometimes call call coaches. So I mean, just I mean, on the personal level of the relationship, it's always been 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 there. It's always been in a sense tight knit. It hasn't ever been anything outside of positive from a personal relationship standpoint. But also, do come back to to the business side. So I mean, nothing. I feel like is is ever done personally and anything like that. But at the end of the day, both of us have jobs to do. Both of us are trying to do that at the, at the highest level. And both of us are trying to do what we feel like it is best, I feel like, for me, of course, and then for him as the team and trying to keep his job as well. So, I mean, I don't think any of us take that, I feel like, the, the wrong way, but definitely just having an understanding of the, the dynamics. I mean, things can be pers- go good personally and not so good business-wise. And things can be good business-wise and not personally. So, just taking it for for what it is and understanding how the dynamics change and how they switch. One thing that we definitely don't have an answer to, Jalen, he said that he left a meeting, I think out in California with your representation, uh, yeah. thinking, he said he texted his people that they were, de- he thought that they were maybe days away from having a deal done with you and he was really optimistic. And then he sounded surprised. What happened there? Can you clear up that confusion as to why he would think that he was so close to having a deal? Um, I mean, for all of that was true. All of that was 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 true. I think, like again, for me, it was. I feel like some some built up frustration from from different things. Like I said, I'm not going to go too far into, but just some some different things built up um, that I was feeling and have been feeling, and kind of just from that moment, just something that I felt like was best for for me and my and my team to do after in a sense coming back from the game. All right. And so now uh you know how this works. You've talked about it on our show. Like there's a lot of opportunities that I could play out the year. I could get signed. I could get traded or I could get franchise tagged. Uh is that is, is a fran because now when they sign Montez, we can talk about that in a second. Mm-hmm. You're the obvious candidate for a transition tag or a franchise tag. Would that bother you? Would it bother me? I mean, like I said, from the business side of it, no, because I understand it. 
And I mean, sure, I already in a sense knew knew the game before in a sense Montez got signed. It was, I mean, of course, now that he got signed, it's like, okay, I know that if anybody's gonna get tagged, it's gonna it, it it would be me, I'm I'm safe to say. Um and then I feel like after that, it just turned into a contract situation. So clearly they're not they're not letting me go. So I mean, from from that point it just continued to figure out what the what the best thing to do is and if we can come together, of course, on the contract um, number and situation and go from there, then I'm sure that'll that'll be the first option. And then, of course, if not, then having to do what I have to do as far as the, the franchise tag. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they won't let me walk in free agency. So I mean, <laughs> that, there's, that would course, surprise me. Yes. Yeah, no, it, it, it's different options and different things that I've definitely weighed out in my head, um, of course, since the trade deadline. And, of course, since last week when Montez got paid. So, I mean, it's definitely – me understanding the business, but I mean, I wouldn't take none of it, none of it personal. I'm not the first guy to get franchise tag, or if I was, I'm not going to be the last one. So, I mean, I'm not really too concerned about it. And and then we mentioned Montez. It's like it, it was. It's been a really nice vibe seeing all the secondary guys, especially rooting for you, wanting like interceptions and such to be manifested, so you could you could get taken care of in that way. Then. But then how does it feel to see the new guy just get traded for and he'd be here and he hasn't really even practiced that much? He hasn't played and they take care of him. It's a, Is that a tough moment for you? I mean, I feel like in a sense from a, a flesh-speaking standpoint, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, well, how can we do that to him and not get my get mine done? And I mean, it's easy to say that. I find that's, a, that's an easy thing to do, an easy thing to feel. But, I mean, for me, it's one of those things where it's like, again, I've said it plenty of times, like his situation isn't my situation. It's like if you understand the business, none of it, in a sense, surprises surprises me. So it's like, I mean, you're not going to trade away, in a sense, if I'm not mistaken, a second-round pick to bring in a big-time level player to not sign him. So it's like there's not – I mean, there, you, you have to sign You have to sign him. You have to take care of him. He's a high-quality player, a, a top guy in the, in the league in his position. So, I mean, it's not – None of it surprises me, honestly. At the end of the day, I, I would expect him to take care of him, considering you give up a second round pick. You the next step is to sign an extension. So I don't think there's a reason to to weigh it or anything like that. I mean, shoot, get the get the deal done. That's what we brought him in here for to keep him long term. So I mean, I'm not as far as as far as that goes. I don't feel any kind of way, except for in a sense excitement for him and looking to get my get my turn when that time comes. But I feel like the for me, honestly, I'm I'm in a position where I'm not. I'm not tripping off the time. I think for me, it's always it's been a thing where I've mapped out my whole life, wanted to do things in this time way, this time frame, and it's like I've like God, God got control, and I gotta let it go. And it's like even like for me, I've had this plan. I'm going to league three years, resign after my third year. That didn't happen. It was like, okay, boom, I'm gonna sign before I'm going to my fourth year. Boom, boom, that didn't happen. It's like it's not about my time frame. At the end of the day, I think God is cooking and brewing something up for me, developing me in a certain way, and having this time and this plan that I'm that I'm waiting for. And it's like even me having the season I'm having, I'm not gonna say in a sense nobody expected, but it's like, nah, like it's it, it, it's different this year. And it's and it's one of those things where an all pro year is is truly attainable. And it's not just talking about actually me going and putting that out there each and every week. So it's like, I mean for me, I know that the that that the bag is gonna be is gonna be different after this year than if I was to do a deal at the time when which I wanted. So I mean it's really not not about me and what I want in the time of thing, but God's going to take care of me in the best way, and I believe that wholeheartedly. Hey, Jalen Johnson, you're a pro, man. The way you're talking about it and, like, walking a very difficult line between, like, advocating for yourself and living with the way that the business is and also trying to be, like, a teammate and a, and a good dude. Like, we've, we've asked people, like, hey, is there a perception from the outside that Jalen is doing this like a bad guy or no? And we've gotten no's on that. So do you feel like, you, you feel like you've handled this like a professional? I mean, I, I mean, just to answer your question, I feel like, yeah, but I mean, it's really just about understanding. At the end of it, it's about having a sense of peace, too. I mean, I feel like you can understand the game or you want to understand the business or you want, but if you're not at peace, if you don't, in a sense, serve something higher and bigger than this business and this game, then I feel like it, it can take you, it can take you any which direction. It's like, I'm, I'm rooted and grounded in some way bigger than this business, some way bigger than this game and going through contracts. So it's like, I'm not. I'm not I'm not tripping. I'm I'm trying to build myself up spiritually and build myself up with my inner man who I live with each and every day, who I gotta look in the mirror and see each and every day. So this contract 
situation is honestly not not that big of a deal from the, from that perspective of trying to really take care of myself and be the best man I can be, be the best person I can be. So I mean, there's bigger battles I fight every day than a contract situation. So so Jalen, you've said it to the reporters out at House Hall. You've now said it to us. Like focused on being all pro the rest of the way. You know what that is? That's not Pro Bowl. That's all pro. That's literally top two corner at the position. Uh, you you've got you've got two picks. The league the league leader has six. There's a couple of guys with four. There's a huge group of guys with three. There's a huge group of guys with two. Those are that's just one stat. How would you make the case? Because you said it's attainable. What is the case that you would make beyond the interception numbers to say that Jalen Johnson is one of the top two cornerbacks in football? Not being targeted, um, having very limited targets at that. I mean, since the game I got two interceptions, I've had two targets. And it's like I don't think other corners can walk around truthfully saying, oh, well, I only got one or two targets this game or I only got zero targets. Like that doesn't – That's I, I can just say that doesn't happen for, for a lot of those guys that have six interceptions and five. And it's like I don't know how many of those are corners. I mean, I know a lot of safeties get – get a lot of picks, but I know Deron Bland at, at corner, he has, I want to say, four. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Adebo, who just got Tyson for a few, now he's got four. But Yeah, so, I mean, there's, there's, there's a few guys, of course, that are up there, but it's also, too, there's, I feel like a lot of times there's no fear in throwing, throwing the ball at those guys. Or, so, I mean, I feel like for me, it's one of those things where if you look at my whole entire body of work, it's like yeah, there's, there's not, there's really not guys open. There's, I mean, not too many opportunities where I'm missing, making – plays in the backfield, trying to be aggressive, coming down, making tackles. So, I mean, I'm making all the plays in the sense, for the most part, that I, that I can make. There's always a quick move for improvement. But I feel like if you look at the whole body of work, I feel like I'm putting together a very solid, not even solid, an exceptional year, I feel like, so far with considering the target, considering the completion percentage, considering the turnovers, and still making tackles and impacting the game in different ways. I feel like there's not too many guys, I feel like, on maybe on the list that you have listed as far as the interceptions that – I feel like can can really say those same things and those and that be the case. Is that because I agree with you for the record? Uh, sometimes throughout my life watching football, it's been I'm not throwing at that guy because he's awesome, and other times it's I'm not throwing at that guy because why would I throw at him when I can throw at these other guys? Not to like disparage your teammates or whatever, but I'm wondering if like the coaches. Do you feel like you are being looked at and respected as, yeah, this dude is an actually great cornerback and not just, well, we've got some rookies, so we may as well throw at them instead of throwing at Jalen? I mean, honestly, I feel like you can say that. You can make the argument with a lot of, I feel like a lot of teams, maybe it's not a rookie, but maybe it's somebody who, in a sense, isn't as well-known. I mean, I feel like yep. they're still, I mean, even, I feel like you, we take Trayvon Diggs, for example. You don't get eleven. You don't get eleven interceptions in a year without being targeted plenty of plenty of times. So it's like it's not to say that there was a slot on the other side or where he had a rookie on the other side. So like, nah. At the end of the day, it's based on what they feel like what the offense can do. I mean, the offense is all about matchups. It's all about where they feel like they can take advantage of. So it's like, I don't. I don't care who's on the other side. You can never discredit a corner who doesn't get targeted. I mean, I don't know who was. I mean, it, it's so many different examples I can use, but it's not always about, oh, well, okay, just go to that side because it's the other side. Like, no, nah, there's still a respect factor in that win. And, two, I mean, you can the coordinator can tell you what you would, what you want to do all, all they want, but if the quarterback decides to throw the ball there, then he decides to throw the ball there. So, I mean, it's not mm -hmm. just a simple, oh, well, okay, well, the coordinator told him to just throw it over here because, like, no, nah, at the end of the day, he still sees what he sees. He still goes through his progression. He still has the option to – Throw the ball. So, I mean, I feel like it's not it's not just about who's on the other side. It's about who that who that man is too on on that side of the field. Do you think uh, Adebo and Marcus May were, were they playing like are, are they doing the gambling thing uh, and then trying to make plays on the ball? They got a lot of turnovers and they made good plays against Tyson yesterday. No, they just played good football. I mean, <laughs> they were connected connected in coverage and made made plays. I mean, I I mean, the only from what I seen, I, I didn't see any gambling or anything like that and boys play good ball and they capitalize on the plays were you guys surprised uh they didn't really throw the ball downfield that much against you guys were you surprised at their game plan because herbert didn't have to throw the ball downfield against you either 
Yeah, especially when you look on tape and you see how many deep shots they take. Um, I mean, really, both teams. I mean, but so like, what, why? Why is that? What? What? Why would a team take a bunch of deep shots, but then play the Bears and not take deep shots, but also have success? Like, what? What are they exploiting? I mean, honestly, I don't know. I guess it's one of those things where if you see it working for another team, sometimes you do a copycat and you kind of just do right do what they do. But I mean, it's. I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't, I can only defend what what they give me. I don't know why they. Choose in a sense not to throw the ball deep or continue to, I feel like, maybe stay true to their offense. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I mean, I'm sure that they have a reason why to it. And it is what it is. Well, Bryce Young put up a few and uh, the Bears own that draft pick on Thursday night. So go get, go get a few and take one to the house. All right. Where the orange? It's national TV again. <laughs> <laughs> we go see. We go see. All right. You got something special though for Thursday night football. Yes. As far as what? As far as, I don't know, a little celebration. Let's let's you know. <laughs> we gonna see. We gonna see. All right. Actually, I got I got a deal. There was this little girl we gave. I gave her. Well, I didn't. Advocate Healthcare gave her tickets, and I presented it to her. Her name is Ava, if I'm not mistaken. And she asked me if I get an interception on Thursday night, I have to do the gritty. So by default, that's my interception dance because that's what she asked and requested. So if I does come to fruition, then that's I'm sure the celebration I'll do. That's right, awesome. Well, we'll be looking for that. Well, and Bryce Young has to now not be a coward. He has to target you so that you can do an interception and do the gritty for Ava. That's great. I mean, that's, that's a deep word as far as the coward word. But I, mean, <laughs> I, I, said, he said, I, I said it, not you. You don't have to I, own that one, they're, they're scared of you. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jalen, thanks for the time, man. We appreciate you as always. We'll talk Friday. You have a good one. All right, man. Thanks, man.